talk about the Bolivian People's Cinema, a film movement that originated in uh, the Latin American country, Bolivia. Since 1524, this country had been under Spanish colonial rule, uh, which ended in 1825. Bolivia emerged as a nation state. However, this did not translate into the creation of a post-colonial democratic state. As a film movement, people cinema is situated within the socio-political and cultural reality of this country, which informed both the content as well as the um, cinematic language of the films produced. Now, once colonial rule ended, what happened was the power was transferred from the Spanish imperial crown to the local feudal class who were basically the descendants of the white Spanish settlers. And they were referred to in Latin America as the Creoles. They, despite being the minority in, the, in terms of population, uh, they had total control over both the economy as well as the political structure of the country. And uh, the majority of the population were the indigenous people. But they, who had been continuously exploited and repressed throughout the colonial rule, continued to be persecuted. And this system was perpetuated by the white elite class, who treated the indigenous people with a very racist attitude, despite the diversity uh, within the indigenous communities in terms of uh, culture and languages, they were all uh, regarded as los indios, the Indians, and they were uh, thought to be ignorant, to be inferior, while the government, through its policies, uh, ensured that the condition of poverty and indignity of the Indians uh, was a con con constant presence in Bolivian society. Thus, we see how the class structure in this society was determined predominantly by race. And uh, the middle class within the Bolivian society uh, were the mestizos, who were people with mixed race ancestry. The mestizos identified with the class interests of the elites, the whites, and they acted or they played the role of middlemen in enacting upon the indigenous people the discriminatory and repressive policies of the white oligarchy, who basically controlled the mo most of the arable land in the country as well as the natural resources. Now, in the 20th century, we find uh, Bolivian society under the neo-imperialist uh, power of the United States government. The country, Bolivia, was uh, very rich in, um, and still is, uh, very rich in uh, terms of natural resources. They had a vast uh, reserves of tin as well as uh, natural gas. This was being exploited by North American corporations, uh, and this exploitation was extreme. And this was ensured through the imp implementation of neoliberal policies, open markets, free trade, which had simultaneously ensured that Bolivia as a nation could not develop its infrastructure, its industries. And this was something that the local oligarchy colluded with this process because they were amassing private fortunes in the process. Uh, now, this lack of development in terms of the infrastructure was reflected in the lack of development of a film industry. In 1897, the first film screening took place in Bolivia, but we do not find a national film industry developing for a long time. Over a long period, films were made, isolated names do crop up, but these were these never contributed to the development of a national film movement. And um, uh, what we f uh, find is instead that these films which were made uh, were aimed at the elites, at the elite classes. And so the narratives would be told from the perspective of the minority. 
within the country and so the indigenous characters would always be exoticized they uh, and the language that they would use would always be uh, spanish despite the fact that uh, a great diversity in terms of languages existed in the country today bolivia recognizes 37 official languages but spanish was the predominant mode of expression mode of speech in film in cinema now from its very initial phase uh, Bolivian people cinema, which developed as a resistance uh, cinema, as a form of resistance cinema, uh, would uh, be concerned with these issues, the issues of representation of the indigenous people, the issue of language. They would uh, there, therefore um, have their narratives being told from the perspective of the indigenous people rather than from the perspective of the elites. They would um, use Quechua or Aymara as the language uh, that is being spoken uh, rather than Spanish. Uh, and so these are concerns that we find being aired in their films. Another factor, another cinematic uh, influence that they were reacting against and resisting uh, was that of Hollywood. Now, one of the reasons why the film industry did not develop in the country was the domination of Hollywood, which had total control over the um, national film market. And through Hollywood, the Bolivian audience was being exposed to a vision of modernity, which uh, did not uh, connect or relate to the reality of Bolivian life. And so they were identifying with a vision that was not in any way connected to their experience. Uh, this was basically the way in which, through Hollywood, the capitalist vision of the imperialist intentions of the United States was being disseminated. So Hollywood played a very, role, uh, a very important role in terms of cultural imperialism in uh, Bolivia. This was another influence that uh, the filmmakers uh, engaged in the people's cinema movement would be reacting against. Uh, Jorge Sanquines, who is uh, a leading figure within this movement, writes in his essay, In Search for a People's Cinema, a commercial US film is consistently expressing capitalist ideology without at all claiming to be the vehicle for awareness. A revolutionary film that projects the revolution in that same language will be selling its content and formally betraying its ideology. Hence, the search for a different cinematic expression. Now, how did the Bolivian people cinema movement come into being, despite the lack of development of any kind of infrastructure? Now, uh, the USA had a very strong uh, control over the economy and the political structure, uh, which was um, being aided by the CIA, economic and political advisors, as well as the military which uh, in Bolivia played a, a very important role in repressing all forms of mass movements. So there is a history of genocides and massacres throughout the 20th century that suppressed all forms of people's struggles. In um, 1952, in Bolivia, there uh, took place a national revolution and a government came into uh, power who promised changes. They brought about a very, uh, three very important changes in Bolivian society. One was agrarian reforms and the nationalization of the mines. This was partially implemented, but even then it uh, succeeded in bringing about considerable improvement in the in lives of the indigenous people. Secondly, they uh, brought universal right to vote. Thus, the majority of the population, the indigenous people who had been excluded from the democratic process of the country, were now able to vote. And uh, thirdly, they, es they established a National Film Institute, the Bolivian Film Institute. And this film institute uh, were primarily engaged in creating newsreels, documentaries. But the, documentation, the documentary work of Jorge Ruiz who uh, produced these very complex portrayals of the socio-cultural uh, reality of Bolivian life uh, was a massive, uh, was a profound influence on the 
filmmakers associated with the people's cinema movement. In fact, Oscar Soria, who was the scriptwriter for Ruiz, uh, later on became an, an important uh, part of the movement. In uh, 1964, a CIA-sponsored military coup took over and a dictatorship, a military dictatorship was established of uh, Rene Barrientos. Now, in its initial phases, the dictatorship tried to appear liberal and they, uh, uh, they brought in um, Sankines as the director of the Film Institute. Sankines uh, had, uh, before becoming the director, had produced a single film, a short film titled Revolution, Revolution, which was about the workers' resistance that had led to the 1952 National Revolution. During his tenure as uh, the director of the institute, he produced two films. One was Aisa, which uh, was the Quechua word for landslide, and the other was Ukamau, which uh, was the Quechua word for as it is. Ukamau was very important uh, in the fact that it uh, emphasized on the reality in Bolivia where uh, ethnicity determined social classes. Following the release of Ukamau, he was dismissed from his post. This was in 1967. Um, and after his dismissal, he created, along with Oscar Soria, uh, Ricardo Rada, and Antonio Aguino, the Ukamau Film Company, Ukamau Limited. The first film produced uh, by Ukamau Limited was called Blood of the Condor or Ivar Malku. This film was a, a manifestation of the theoretical basis of the people's cinema movement. And um, the first thing about it was that it was based on uh, an actual news report where, uh, which said that indigenous women uh, were being sterilized without them knowing uh, by American doctors under the pretense of giving them medical treatment. Chai Centro Maternidad Pi Kunantardeka Martina Sapanaka Wanyuska. Uhmana Alin Kachen Kai Centro Maternidad Pi. Muyuzuna Kuna Wilawanku. His own warmikuna Chai Centroman Purerganku Kunanta Mana Onko Zikripunku. Chai Supai Onkolka Tukui Ayukuna Pinya. Imatachus coca willa wasun, chaita wasuncha. Coca mama, kai suertita willa ruai, chai patuku, ayuzunakuna, tantaricuiku. Wale kunaman, kawa kunamanta, tira kamiko kayamu, mana alintu, el ringo kunawango, wani wanka, ukiakanku. Kaika, sutin yoksen, el ringo kunaka, wanuitan. It received a very strong response from the urban audience. Students and uh, workers led massive protests across uh, La Paz, which uh, is the capital of Bolivia, and uh, they uh, forced the uh, uh, two inquiry commissions uh, being established, and um, ultimately this led to the expulsion of American Peace Corps uh, volunteers from Bolivia. <laughs> Mana, 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 mana,
You'll explicar. You'll explicar. Tell them. We only paralyzed women have too many children. These people. Alguna vez los tanques causan todo armico. Pues son cupi. Que quieran tanto los rascai con tu nata ñoca. You can't do this. No pueden. Ma'am, with respect to the blood of the condor, how does a film about sterilization and birth control comment on the USA imperialist intervention in Bolivian government? Mm -hmm. It does so at two levels. One is, of course, at the level of metaphor, because it is showing how USA is influencing economic and political policies and daily life uh, in Bolivia. Uh, I, but, however, there is a more literal uh, tone to it. And this, uh, for this, I will quote uh, something that Alfonso Gumusio Dagron said in his essay, Three Films by Jorge Sankines. Uh, he says, birth control itself is only a way of referring from the particular to the general problematic of the daily intervention of North American imperialism in Latin America. The condemnation of birth control is real. It is no parable. To stop an underpopulated country from demographic growth is to condemn it to extinction, to weaken it, to shackle it to underdevelopment and slavery. Now, we must understand that in uh, this film, the condemnation of birth control has nothing to do with Catholic morality, of course. However, um, what Sankines and his team realized was that they had failed to connect with their intended audience who were always the indigenous people. And this was because of a profound difference in the cultural view held by the indigenous people from the Western cultural view. And uh, he realized that the urban spectators, like the filmmakers themselves, were also steeped in a certain Western theory of aesthetics, which failed to connect with the uh, worldview uh, of the indigenous uh, communities. And uh, he writes in, uh, in his essay, Language and Popular uh, Culture, the majority of our population are imbued in an Andean indigenous culture, Quechua Aymara. For this reason, we started to look for a cinematic language suitable for this culture. In this difficult operation, we had to start within ourselves since we had been formed within the parameters of the dominant colonizing culture. And what was this difference? The difference, primary difference, lay in the way in which the indigenous people imagined society. They imagined society not in terms of isolated individuals. Rather, it was the expression of a collective identity. And also, Another uh, factor was the way experience uh, affected indigenous life. Experience was not something that affected the individual alone. It was something that the entire community was affected by. And so history was something that was lived collectively. And thus, in Blood of the Condor, uh, what happened was he uh, focused on the particular experience of, of a single family within the indigenous community, uh, that of Ignacio and Paulina. Paulina being a woman who had been sterilized as part of this secret program. And uh, through their particular experiences, uh, an, a commentary was made on Bolivian society, on indigenous people, on um, American interventionism in Bolivian life. And uh, this was something that did not relate to the indigenous way of thinking, worldview. So they st started to change their cinematic language, their narrative technique. From the collective, from the individual protagonist, we now see in his later films, the emergence of a collective protagonist. And, uh, uh, and if we just compare the um, posters of the two films, Ivar Malku, Blood of the Condor, and a later film, El Coraje del Pueblo, which uh, was based on uh, a massacre of minors carried out by the army in 1967. 
uh, June 1967 during the nighttime festivities of uh, the night of San Juan where minors were and their families were killed and then their bodies were disappeared. This uh, film focuses on a collective experience and not only a collective experience in terms of the fact that this group experienced this massacre collectively but also the fact that through history minors have been repressed through similar acts of genocide. So it's a historical identity as well. filmmakers associated with this movement was because of the fact that they identified film uh, primarily in terms of its utility within a larger struggle for liberation. Film was a weapon for them in, uh, in a medium to express radical revolutionary ideology. So uh, they would be obviously persecuted by the government. Uh, in 1971, for instance, San Kines had to go into exile. and. Uh, Therefore, um, what the filmmakers associated with this movement uh, had to face was working not only under conditions of very limited resources, but also uh, working under very difficult conditions in terms of the repression and the op uh, oppression meted out to them by the government. Um, and now, what, ha what has happened to the People's Cinema movement? Uh, of course, uh, Latin America and Bolivia is going through a period of great social transition um, with uh, a socialist revolution taking over the continent. But um, the people cinema movement ha has uh, somehow uh, decreased in terms of its radical charge, in terms of its revolutionary charge. And uh, also, the, in terms of its resources, uh, 
It has it ha it is in a Sankines, for instance. Uh, his latest films have been sponsored by the government of Bolivia. So there is a transition that is taking place, and it would be interesting to note what a uh, new direction the film movement in Latin America and in Bolivia would uh, take in the future. Ma'am, how did exile affect the films produced by Sankinas? Of course. He uh, went into exile in 1971, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, he realized that while he could not work uh, with the indigenous people in Bolivia, the conditions uh, that, uh, per that created the poverty and misery of the indigenous people uh, were the same across Peru, Colombia, or Ecuador. So he continued to make films here, and uh, in uh, his next film, for instance, uh, El Enemigo Principal, the principal enemy, was uh, made in Peru, and he used uh, the Quechua Aymara oral tradition as a narrative technique in, uh, in this film. Thank you.